Lindsay Ellis has quit YouTube, and as we can see by this first tweet here, she is uh, completely quitting. Like, not making videos anymore. Just, nah, gone. Not not interested in doing any of that anymore. You may remember Lindsay Ellis, in case you have joined and do not remember, as uh, someone Carl viewed a lot because she was making critiques of media and doing it a lot from a progressive perspective. Yeah, she was kind of more old school YouTube, wasn't she? Uh, yeah. With the whole nostalgia critic scene. But definitely a left-wing progressive perspective, constantly, and, uh, well, it's a bit silly. And it garnered an audience for her of progressive leftists. And, well, they hate her now. Why? Because she made one tweet in which she said a thing that they accused her of being racist, which doesn't make any sense, as we will get to in a minute. But as you can see here, Lindsay Ellis is literally calling it quits because of that Raya tweet this person says here. She has over a million YouTube subscribers and about 9,000 Patreon supporters, and her career couldn't survive one problematic tweet. That's what, uh, that's what's operating in this toxic space is like. And if we go to the third image on here, John, you can see the offending tweet for anyone who hasn't kept up with this nonsense. Lindsay Ellis, verify check marked. Also watch Raya and The Last Dragon, and I think we need to come up with a name for this genre that is basically Avatar The Last Airbender Reduxes. It's like half of all YA fantasy yeah, adult fantasy, yeah. in the last few years. It doesn't, there's nothing there. No, that seems like legitimate critique. I don't even know why I bothered reading it, because it really is just a nothing burger yeah. to anyone who's normal. Uh -huh. But to the progressive leftists, this was racism. And Wait, to what? Me, I still don't really understand why. I... I, I I think they're trying to argue that she's comparing like all Asian an anime or whatever is similar to Avatar and therefore that's racist or something. But it, it's it's so opaque that quite frankly, I even have a tough time keeping up with what this group of weirdos thinks. Anyway, so I mean, just absolutely nothing. But also I checked out like the tweet and the subsequent tweets. And what's interesting going forwards is that there was quite frankly, in my opinion, of her audience, it seemed like a subsection mm. that were like this. I mean, I'm not a fan of progressive leftists in, his, in any of them, but the subsection that I saw being awful to her about this were a subsection and right. like not a majority, which I think... So just a very small minority of her audience that was toxic about this. From what I can visually see, but, okay. you know, with such a large audience of 1.2 million subscribers that mm. she has, then, well, I imagine there's a lot of tweets. Anyway, so moving on. So let's go to her full state. Why is she leaving? Why does she give the reasons? Saying here, this was going to be a YouTube video but I just don't have it in me to invite that kind of scrutiny. To be the last in the, sti in, the si in the sick, sad line of YouTubers who get all weepy on camera and cry about how they just can't do it anymore. Boo hoo hoo. I had planned to move video content to Nebula, but I realized now that doing that is just keeping wounds wide open. My life ended nine months ago. I mean, good God. Um, what has been taking up bandwidth ever since then has been a ghost. It's almost funny how many people would insist that I have lost nothing, you know, because subscriber count is the only metric for success and cancel culture doesn't exist. One YouTube channel chugging along on algorithmic inertia is not success. It's just an engine driving on fumes. And, um... That seems pretty gloomy. Yeah, very gloomy. And uh, one thing I didn't really make sense there is she's like, yeah, well, you know, subscriber count doesn't really matter. It's not a measure for success. But also, my subscriber count isn't going up, therefore I failed. Which seems like a contradiction. Hmm. But whatever. And uh, I think she's probably not in the best mental state writing all this as well, as will be made apparent. Many will say this is being melodramatic. That my life isn't over. That there was absolutely nothing stopping me from brushing myself off building back up goodwill and shutting up and playing the game. And I tried that. In a way, I suppose it's good that I did, because I needed to learn the hard way that was never going to work. There is no un-effing this. You can't find the energy if there is nothing left to convert it into. You can't be a better person if you are nothing but the hollow shell of one. I mean, she really thinks that her entire career is over on the basis that she seemed to have made a tweet. Subsection of audience were autistic mm -hmm. in the extreme about how this is racism. But then again, I mean, progressive circles, what were you expecting? Well, that's all they frankly. do is problematize things. Yes. Um, so they problematized her. And that has now led to her making multiple videos, which I'm sure people will remember Carl covered at the time, of her doing interviews and making videos about how, you know, these are her crimes and how mm. it's silly that people are mad at her. Yeah. To the point that she is literally now walk, talking in the phrase of like, my life is over. Yeah, this sounds, like the, this sounds like the words of a, 
I don't know, a checker agent who ends up in a gulag. They're just lamenting how they've been cast out by the great com- the great society, the great tribe that they used to be part of, and they feel like everything is over. I can see that. I just remember from uh, a section of Gulag Archipelago mm. where Solzhenitsyn remarks on some of the Cheka agents who even as they were getting shot were still like, you know, God bless the Soviet Union. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Like, I'm, just, I'm just here by a mistake. I'm actually one of the good ones. Like the fact that... And like the fact when she says there is no unheffing this, it's like... But there's nothing left. Yeah. That's what I don't get. Like I... I, it, I in think, terms of the YouTube channel and everything, everything seems fine. She still has a big audience. She's making money. She can make views. more videos. So from that, from the commercial side, that's really good. What's going on here is clearly psychological and social. Yes, it is what's happening to her head, which is that she is extremely in a bad place, shall we say, mm. because of a subsection of her audience being retarded. Mm-hmm. Um, which I don't really doesn't really make sense, but whatever, you know, mm. that's the world she lives in, and uh, the audience she has, well, the subsection there at least. Twenty twenty one has been the worst year of my life. I am traumatized by it. To this day, I still have people scolding me by how I handled it. This is all about a fucking tweet, remember? Yeah, this one is, tweet. This always seems to go back to, and a tweet where the the offense is so obscure that between the two of us, we don't understand it. Nada. I literally don't understand. Okay. And, they, and uh, she continues, that I should have handled it differently, that I should have controlled my stands as if I had the capability capa- 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 to know... Capability. Sorry, capability to know what any of these people were even saying to strangers on Twitter while I was essing blood for weeks on end. TMI. I, I don't know if she had some, men- some health problems going on as well. She doesn't allude to that ever again, so I don't know what's going on there, but okay. And uh, she continues... The worst thing about this whole year is that I can't even admit this trauma because of all the rhetorical devices people have already come up with to dismiss it. That centering my own pain is evidence of me not listening. Yep, this is this is a common tactic of this very toxic community. If you've seen some of the things they've written, which I'm sure we'll get into. And this is where I'm sort of wondering, like, have you learned anything? Yeah. No one else does this. No one else is like, oh man, this this guy's complaining. What a loser because of his essential yeah, that's characteristics. A good point. This is only a thing you ever see in progressive circles. Mm-hmm. Don't say outside. I mean, and again, the the unique thing about progressive circles, really, in in a social context, is as two things. One of them is that they focus on problematizing everything. So eventually, they'll problematize you. And once you are the problem, you get onto the second thing, which is there is no there is no route to redemption in no. progressive circles. You're guilty for all. Once you're guilty, that's it. You're done. You're there's no way back. Like she says, there is no unearthing this. Yeah, and she seems to have been in a place where she agreed with all of that, and that was her social norm. It was great. Well, before she was problematized, she was loving it by the sounds of it. And now all of her social norms are out the window, which, of course, can cause quite the problem. Mm-hmm. Anyway, she continues, and she makes it explicit that this is a problem with her progressive circles, saying that I'm, weaponti- I'm weaponizing my fragile white womanhood. Anyone else use this phrase, ever? Anyone else talk in these terms? No. No one ever does just progressives or whatever to the point out that having thousands upon thousands of people who you have never met hate you and say whatever will get them the most updoots about us about is in fact traumatizing that people i used to know would fragrantly lie about me on twitter.com to the tune of thousands of retweets and tens of thousands of likes and just had to sit there and take it my favorites are the people who dismiss any potential harm i might have incurred as justified because I am a wealthy white woman. Open brackets, I'm not wealthy. Yeah, but you are a white woman. Not a problem for us. Problem for progressivism, though. And you know that, which is why you wrote it, and you understand the criticism from the progressives. It's the same criticism, but it's theirs. While the same people's hearts positively bleed for Britney Spears. It's just like... Like, we, we covered a few videos before, and again, and again, it was the same message. It was like... Yes, these people are terrible. Why are they terrible to you? Because of progressive ideas. That's a problem, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And uh, the lesson has not been learned. But also, I just, again, leading out that her life has been awful because of all of this. I mean, you got nominated for a Steamy Award from YouTube. Well, a Streamy Award. Streamy Award, Steamy Award, Award is Steamy probably Award. something a bit different. I think ContraPoints actually won it. So oh. maybe. Anyway. <laughs> so then she goes on to quote some essays. And I'm going to cut out a whole bunch of this because, quite frankly, it's, it's just weird and not my space. And I'm sure Carl will be going in more deeply on some of this to address it. But uh, she quotes an essay and she says in here, in the quote, One of the most common tools of exclusion is through mobbing, 
which is rarely talked about because unlike rape, murder, etc., it's not easy to pin it on a single person or scapegoat. Mobbing is emotional abuse practiced by a group of people, usually peers, over a period of time through method, uh, methods such as gaslighting, rumor mongering, and ostracism. It is most documented in workplace academic environments, i.e. key points of capitalist tension. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, capitalism is the problem. Capitalism Ultimately. is to blame for this. That is where all this stuff... And then, you know, it says, but it is thoroughly institutionalized into feminist, queer, and radical spaces as well. Again, well, it's funny. It seems to be more prominent in these so-called feminist, queer, and radical spaces than anywhere else, because we just don't encounter this. Again, but it always comes from progressives. This mobbing, this dogpiling, this ostracism. It's such a weird, pathetic criticism as well, where someone's like, yes, workplaces and academic environments, key points of capitalist tension. As if you're trying to throw, like, ah, oh, no, capitalism bad. It's like, no, it has nothing to do well, with that. It's and just also, signaling as well. They're saying, yeah. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm still a leftist, guys. Like, don't... Academic environments, yes. Hives of right-wing And also, thought. notice the language is coded here, so you have to attack capitalism immediately before making even a slight uh, oblique criticism of feminist, queer, and radical spaces. Yes, because I'm still of the left, guys. I'm still a leftist, exactly. guys. Exactly. Like, Pathetic. It's just, no, it's just sad, anyway. But also, it has learned nothing. And then continues, number one, it has, un it has an unusually strong power to damage the victim's relationship to society because it can't be written off as an outlier, as some singular monster. It reveals a fundamental truth that people that make it difficult to trust ever again, people become like aliens, like a pack animal that can turn on you as soon as some mysterious phenomenon... Pheromone. Sh pheromone shift marks you for death. Which um, yeah, um, this is what this is one of the big problems of social media. I think like basically what she's describing there is a kind of mass psychosis. Yeah, but also the idea that oh you can't trust people again. This is the de facto for strangers. Okay, just normal circumstances. The de facto for strangers is you you don't know them. You have no idea if they're trustworthy. You have no idea if they're going to be nice to you. Oh, yeah, but the, I would say in a, a healthy society, there is a middle ground baseline of trust where it's like, okay, well, I don't trust you, but I'm not going to instantly assume you're out sure. there to kill me. But this is a unique thing we have created in civilized countries. Yes. Not the baseline of humanity, let's mm -hmm. say. And that is a culture you can foster, and we have, essentially, in many a country. It's being eroded, but whatever. It's part of life. And uh, in the modern age... and. Then she's like, yes, and, and this is the status quo or the, the default situation for being in a progressive circle. Yeah, whose problem is that? Because again, I mean, we've been able to make places where it's not like that, everywhere yeah. else in society, but okay. Mm -hmm. No, they're literally acting like rabid, like a pack of rabid dogs. Yeah. So. Uh, I'm running out of a bit of time, so I'm going to skip over those couple of points there in mm -hmm. which she just says that it's terrible. And it's just like, yes, being ostracized is terrible. I don't really know what to say about that. Mm. It's sort of basic, but whatever. Anyway, and she... Um, she continues and says, uh, for these reasons, PTSD is an almost inevitable outcome of any protracted mobbing case. And uh, I still don't really understand. I, don't, I disagree with that. I mean, I, I do suspect that PTSD is, is perhaps diagnosed more often than is, is practical. PTSD is, is properly applied to someone coming out of a war zone or something like that. High stress intense situations or whatever mm -hmm. it's meant to be. I don't know these things. I so would suspect a post-traumatic stress disorder. So if you're... If you're experiencing PTSD because of social media, uh, then you need to really rethink your engagement with social media. Um, because, yeah, that's that's just ridiculous. Yeah, like I don't get why she lets this... Uh, no one's firing bullets at her as far as I'm aware. These like weird progressives get to her so much. I mean, maybe yeah. because she's like, you know, my own tribe's attacking me or something and therefore she's more hurt by it, but then who cares? Like, they're not your husband. Hmm. Well, we were discussing it before the podcast as well, how this is kind of what we were talking about in terms of anime, and it's like, okay, well, you're you're in the in-group, so you have one set of social norms and rules that you have to live by, and everything's fine. But then as soon as you're out, out ostracized, you're suddenly in the out-group, and you have to suddenly learn how to live your life in this space with a completely different set of rules, where you can't just say the same things you said before because they'll be torn down and criticized. You have to completely change your mode of behavior. And it's very stressful, presumably. PTSD, I would imagine, is a little bit far, though. Mm. And then, uh, but we'll move on, because she goes on to quote this essay some more. Mm. And it says, Feminist queer spaces are more willing to criticize people than abusive systems because they want to reserve the right to use those systems for their own purposes. At least attacking people can be politically viable, especially in a token system where you 
benefit directly from their absence, or where your status as a good feminist is dependent on you constantly rooting out evil. Yes, this is why it is. It's because it's a religion, right? You have to <laughs> proselytize. You have to preach the religion, spread the message in order to be a good person in this worldview. And that is fundamentally toxic. It's why the rest of the world has largely left it behind. I love how this kind of comes across as a leftist meme as well. It's just in oh so many words pointing out why living in a circular fire squad of an of a organization is terrible. Yeah. Because, well, the fire, firing squad ends up right. shooting you. Exactly. It's like, yes. The newsflash, everyone else got there a long time ago, and that, it's why we've been criticizing these people for decades. This is why the cringe feminist meme compilations were so popular. Mm. It wasn't because, you know, Lamau crazy lady. It was Lamau movement crazy. And uh, everyone else got this growing up watching those videos. You know, the compilation number 592 or whatever house <laughs> far you had to get. Uh, I presume Lindsay missed those or, or didn't get a chance. Anyway, so moving on. And this is where it gets kind of uh, dark, uh, let's say. So she, she goes on to say, What I wanted was to quietly disappear, but since this is a platform where people are paying me to make content, I feel like I have to make a statement. If it were just me by myself, I would just sign off and say goodbye and that would be it. But I have a team who depends on my company for health insurance, and including dependents, I supply full benefits for eight people. And here in the US, employer-based insurance is often the only feasible option. Saying to everyone, sorry about your children, but they can't have insurance anymore because Twitter makes me feel sad, just doesn't seem like a fair deal. None of them incidentally know I'm posting this. They probably do now. Yeah, but also... The it's the internet. Everything is public. And again, this is, this is what I find strange, but I guess if she doesn't have the stomach for it, fine. Um then, okay, as she lays it out, Twitter makes her feel sad, therefore not going to do this anymore, which, whatever, whatever, just leave it there. So the only thing I can do now is to keep this page active uh, with the loose premise that someday I'll figure out something in the future to make up for all this. While asking you, please stop messaging me, apologizing for not being able to subscribe anymore, you don't owe me anything, this is Patreon, like my own life and career just running on fumes. And this is where it gets sort of like someone writing a note, which is quite dark. It's, it's just like, it's, Lindsay, you've got a husband, I seem to remember, and a life that is not random losers on... Very successful business, even with this harassment. Yeah, but you've got like some losers on Twitter.com. Um, you really need, you know, this is Could causing just get so off much... Twitter. It's not really a solution because that's, as you say, that's a group that she's still half in. You know, that's the space in which her business operates with all these weird progressive things. Well, her business can operate Twitter without her having to deal with it. Sure, but it's she doesn't... She's spoken about this previously. She doesn't like that solution. Okay. But it's just more the fact that I think you need to change your mindset to one that doesn't recognize these people as important to your life because they're not. Yeah, they're absolutely they really not. Um, and, and instead just be like, I don't care. Go to hell. But again, that would push her more out of the progressive circle. So then she's doomed, isn't she? I'm like, well, who made that bed? But all I know now is that being in the public eye at all is a losing game, and I regret all of it. I regret every time I've stood up for myself, it always backfires. I regret every time I pushed back against something unjust, it was always just used to hurt me. I regret every time I stood up for myself, I never did it correctly. I regret every time I showed any vulnerability, just more ammunition to be used against me later. I regret every time I... I ever tried to play the game with my peers and colleagues, they will drop you the second you aren't popular on Twitter anymore. So, so she's saying that it's basically, progressive um, internet is basically a false clique. Yes. Basically. Of like insect brain people who as soon as you're not popular, they just drop. Yeah. They're, they're only there for use you like some kind of sap in a tree or something. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean literally the Skaven actually. It's not a thing of it. But uh, the end here says, it's all hollow and brittle and if there is one thing I have learned this year, it's how Ex and it is how I can't read that word. Eminently expendable. Expendable, eminently expendable. She is, which um, yeah comes off as her again talking very bad. Which why do you let this bother you so much? I do not know, and uh, I think you need to reassess how you're interacting with these things, yeah. as you said. But then she just kind of ruins it by, by ending it with this. The good, progressive, cis, straight, wealthy white men keep on trucking and coming out on top because deep down they know that the systems they profess to stand up against ultimately exist to benefit them. Learn nothing, did you? No, no. No, I, I mean, that's why I'm sort of out yeah. of sympathy, which is just that if someone cannot go through all this, realize that all of this is just a downward spiral in which they will end up being shot themselves, you know, everyone else figured this out, but okay, you're there, fine, you're learning, that's good. 
And then right at the end, just ruin it. Yeah. Just completely ruin it. No, it's uh, coded language in the end. Like, sh she thinks she can say the same old thing she used to say when she was in the in group, and everyone will smile and clap and laugh, and she'll be better. No, it doesn't work like that. No. Nope. And okay. she's in, she's inculcated this worldview, much like the checker agents and the gulags, where she thinks, oh, it can't possibly be the system that's the problem. It's just a few bad people. It's, it's not the party. It's the people it, in charge no, it's of the party. An, it's like... an administrative mistake. It's not. No, it's not. Like, okay. it's built like this, and it's doing that to you because of that. The way anyway, it's built. She, uh, she ends this off saying, and to all the people telling me I need to grow a thicker skin or remove my foul from the conversation altogether, you are right. I don't have it in me to do the former, so I should do the latter. And then disappears. Hope your New Year's is better than this. Whatever. Okay, so that's her uh, leaving. Uh, what was the response to this? Did, did any of the like weird progressives learn anything? Did they anything? have a bit of self-reflection? Maybe think, oh, have we been a bit too hard on a dear old Lindsay here? I mean, you literally have i mean it's it's weird but you have harassed this woman but, to leaving her entire job tell you what maybe this is where the famous empathy of the left reasserts itself hmm. nah no no let's go to the next one and there are loads of stuff like this but we won't waste too much time on it because i'm sure uh there are a million examples and other people have more time for it so this lady here harrod sickle in the bio of course has Lindsay ellis considered the possibility she's a kind of whack ass b <laughs> and then if we go to the next one Lindsay responds to this uh, the only valid take, she says. And people are like, how did you find this? People are wondering. So we get the next one. Um, well, I, the only way you can find it is by looking for your name, people reckon. I think they're probably right on this one. But as you can see, a response here is some checkmark. Judging from your Patreon letter, these sort of comments, fa comments face deeply hurt you. So maybe don't name search, as in look up your own name, and then find people who don't like you. Because... I mean, you're saying this is driving you to the point you have to leave your job. I know it's easier said than done, but you're basically cutting yourself every time you do it. There's a world where you don't see it, so it doesn't exist. Live in that world, as in, you know. Seems like reasonable advice. And one of your husband, and meals, and, you know, going to the park. And all Economic the prosperity. Or just, just normal life yeah. is what I'm getting at. Like you know? an authentic world. The physical yeah. things, not yeah. the screen mm -hmm. stuff. Anyway, moving on. So let's go to the next one, which is... um. Some reporting on this, so as you can see, there are some outlets starting to be like, you know, this is a story, and uh, yet yeah, that's it's all based on the the last Airbender tweet, which again, nothing burger, but whatever, not our circles. And if we go to the next one, we have some people, of course, seeing giving uh, a response again, just being like, to hell with her. And as you can see by all of those things there, I, I don't even know what you call it, regalia, like trans flag, uh, in trans the bio. flag, a disabled badge, a fungus, a panda and a cup of coffee furry bio yeah as well oh uh, god Avatar, oh, of course. I look that way. let me make a few things crystal effing clear this person says Lindsay ellis is not the left she is one left of center content creator out of thousands of others minorities criticizing prominent usually white cis left of center content creators is not the left eating itself oh it so what is it is it to minorities eating white people is that what he's trying to say what also just what is this tweet it just Lindsay, if no one else you know, this this is exactly this. What is this person? Is this person a right winger? Come on, don't be don't be silly. No, it's a radical left wing activist. Moving on, let's go to the next one, which we just have someone supporting her, I believe. In which they're like, yeah, this is you know dumb, and uh, social media is cancer. If and you're in these circles, it can be, yeah. And then we go to the last one just to make the point as well. The she's been tag feared from the left, no mm -hmm. longer a leftist. Extreme leftist cancelling Lindsay Ellis is the left eating itself. Correct response. Uh, uh, this person says no, it's not. Left Do of center is the same as leftist. <laughs> I just, it's it, just, it means you are groups. on the left from the perspective of the center. It's not center left. No. <sighs> but also the left is eating itself again. Yes, it is. And uh, he's like, no, that's not the case. Dude, Lindsay Ellis is a left of center at best. She's not a leftist from what I've seen. Okay. None of us care <laughs> on the not left. And Aaron there is... Sickle in the bio again. I love this as well. There is always infighting on the left since 1870. Uh, 1770, actually. He's referring to the Paris Commune, but they've been fighting each other for a lot longer than that. Yeah. There are 400 variants of leftists anyway. Do you have yeah, a they're mirror? they're all crazy. Do you have a mirror? <laughs> Just look at your own tweet. There are 400 varieties of leftists and we've been infighting since time immemorial. Y yeah. Yes. We're absolutely toxic. We all say we're, the same things. Like, we're all so unbearable. There are 400 variants of us and yet we are so predictable that you can uh, that people refer to us with the NPC script meme. No, but also like, you are you are so the skaven, you know, so lacking in self-awareness or you know, just diplomacy or uh -huh. manners, frankly, to the point that you're so 
cut off that you're like, there are 400 odd variants of us, and we've been infighting since time immemorial, but the left isn't eating itself again. Snark, snark. (laughs) 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 Okay. (laughs) Okay, Skaven. I don't know what to say. If you enjoyed that segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content we have on the site, such as this epoch that Carl and Bo did together on Saturnalia and the history of Christmas. But if you'd like to find out what else is coming out on the website, you can always follow us on getter.com with lotuseaters underscore com being the at. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you.